Okay, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two. Hopefully, everybody's able to see at least some of this on here and looking at a good feed for the time being on our internet signal as I tighten a couple of loose screws here and check out our broadcast diagnostics and it looks like everything is working pretty well at this point so good news for those of you on Periscope and Twitter uh, for this evening. We'll go ahead and switch over to again what's going on with our Facebook page and thanks everybody for joining us there. We'll tell you a little bit more about the forecast in just a little bit. If you got questions or comments drop into the comment section. We would love to know uh, more a little bit about what's going on in your neck of the woods and also a little bit more about what's going on across the area. Wherever you're at, again, let us know a little bit more about what the weather is doing. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This is Sunday night on News Channel 3 from the News Channel 3 studios in downtown Memphis. We've got, again, some fairly quiet conditions out across much of the Mid-South area, but we could see, again, the potential for a few more showers and thunderstorms into the overnight period, so we'll be looking at that coming up here in just a little while. Currently, again, not that much going on. Do have a few showers, and we could see a few thunderstorms out across the Mid-South as we get into the course of the rest of the evening, so stay tuned for more on that. Welcome to everybody who's just now joining us again on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook keeping you updated with what's going on. Forecast update in the blue bar down here. Social media in the red bar. Our main website address, wreg.com slash weather, if you'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on there. And, of course, all the stuff over on that page. Got to add some social media stuff to this. We're not quite uh, up to date with the amount of stuff that I've been doing out there for right now, so something to take a look at. Let's go ahead and see what's going on in the Mid-South, again, where it comes to uh, rainfall at this time. Got some scattered showers taking place into and around areas of North Mississippi. It does doesn't really look like much, but it has just popped up within the last about hour or so, right between Sledge and I-55, right around the Sardis area. And this is where we're going to continue again to see the possibility of more areas of showers out there. Kevin Dunn, thanks a lot for uh, joining us tonight, and thanks for coming along for the science posts. Glad you're enjoying that as well. Brian Oliver, welcome to the show. Feel free to share our video around Facebook or wherever you are and let people know more about what's going on in the Mid-South area for this evening. Severe weather threat has basically ended, but some of these showers that you see across the Mid-South might be doing a little bit more in the way of stronger weather overnight. Borderline strong to severe. Again, I'll be watching a little bit more about that coming up throughout the rest of the evening, so stay tuned uh, for more on that. Linda Bell Heathcock sprinkling in tip County. We'll switch up to uh, northwest areas of Mississippi and show you most of the rainfall from earlier has basically been leaving the Mid-South area. So from Dresden to down toward Jackson, Lexington, most of the heaviest rainfall has left the area there. More rain making its way in from around eastern Arkansas. And you can see again some of that activity between Batesville and Jonesboro north of Bald Knob. And then more showers developing over parts of southeast Arkansas. A few lightning strikes around the Pine Bluff area. And that is, again, where we've been seeing uh, some of the heavier thunderstorms, such as it is, developing into parts of southeast Arkansas. So looking for more activity there. Going to take a quick second to switch over to uh, the Little Rock radar site and give you a better idea as to what's going on uh, in this location. Again, some thunderstorms around the Grady area, right back around southeastern Arkansas, southeast of Pine Bluff, and more scattered showers just south and west of the News Channel 3 viewing area. Looks like some sort of a boundary layer or maybe a front of some type starting to drift on through and that could trigger off even more showers and thunderstorms across portions of the Mid-South. So if you are traveling tonight, this is something you are going to have to uh, watch out for as we see again more of these areas of showers and thunderstorms continue across much of the area. So if you have any plans for travel, this is what you're going to have to deal with. Down toward about I-55 again, that's where we're seeing the heaviest amount of activity. Just about ready to go across I-55 between Senatobia, Como, and down toward Sardis around Batesville. So you could wind up with some wet roadways out there. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be traveling any place across portions of the Mid-South into those locations. Locations. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on out there. Well, hang on just a second. Sorry about that. We should have had that up and going earlier. Let's take a look and see. There we go. That's better. Okay, right now looking at very quiet conditions out there. If you'd like to see more of our weather bug cameras, again, they're available at wreg.com slash webcams and tons of information available again here to see a little bit more about what's going on. Candy Tippett sprinkling an olive branch. Uh, Linda Bell Heathcock, the new S3S radar. Awesome. Glad you're enjoying it. It's very fun to operate. 
and we'll be using more of that on News Channel 3 at 10 for later on tonight. Here's what it looks like again on radar display. We have a decent amount of rain showers over portions of the Mid-South area moving on through, but we've got even more activity developing back to the west, and that includes some severe weather. Notice the watch box in yellow there over the uh, panhandles of Texas, Oklahoma, back into western Kansas, and more opportunity for more showers and thunderstorms developing into around the rest of the area coming up tonight and into tomorrow tomorrow morning, including the possibility of needing the umbrella for the school bus tomorrow morning. So please keep that in mind if you got kids out there. Rest of the evening and into the next couple of days, we will see again this warm air across the Midwest making its way a little bit closer to us as a warm front develops and moves over the Mid-South as we head toward Tuesday into Wednesday. That's going to take our temperatures up once again. We spent two, count them, two days above 90 degrees in August, according to the National Weather Service, and that's as warm as it's gotten. Now we're going to go back above that again for the next several days, so get set for some warmer conditions heading our way relatively soon. Tipton Traffic, thanks for joining us. Everyone stay safe out there. Very good advice. Uh, looking again for today and into the next couple of days, this is what we're going to be seeing in mainly hot conditions out there. Now, the National Weather Service has also posted information about the heat, possibility of seeing again some dangerous heat indexes out there as well, and could be some strong storms out there all the way throughout the rest of the week, especially in the afternoon and evening. Tonight, the possibility of strong thunderstorms will be along and again, southern parts of the viewing area south of Memphis, again into southeast Arkansas and northern parts of Mississippi. That's where we could see, again, the possibility of whatever we get in the way of strong weather. Linda Bush, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us on Facebook for tonight. Currently, again, in the Mid-South, we're just not seeing that much in the way of any cool weather anytime soon. It'd be nice, but just not going to be happening out there anytime soon for right now. For tonight, low temperatures going back into the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s. Rainfall chances greatest in the dark green shaded area, so that's where we'll see again the best possibility of rainfall for later on tonight. Heading into tomorrow, high temperatures on Monday, mid 80s for the most part, and chances of rain will continue for most of the area throughout most of the day. That means for kids going to and from school tomorrow, probably need some rain protection there. Low temperatures Monday night, lower to mid 70s, not much better than that throughout the rest of the day. And then chances of rainfall dwindling a bit, but still possible Monday night into Tuesday morning. High temperatures on Tuesday, topping the mid to upper 80s once again, coming close to 90 degrees. Chances of rain remain in the area as we head through Tuesday. Tuesday night's lows back into the mid-70s or so and not doing too bad out there again. But chances of rainfall really start to slacken off as we go toward Tuesday as that warm front lifts throughout the entire area. Peak of the week Wednesday, temperatures back around 90, so very much on the hot and humid side once again. If we're going into the course of the next couple of days, again, what we're going to be looking for Pardon me while I alter things by just a little bit here. This is where we're going to see, again, the hottest conditions out there. Heat indexes in the Mid-South as we go toward Wednesday will be topping 100 degrees again into the area. So please use caution and common sense if you're going to be working or exercising outdoors. Chances of rain on Wednesday, best east of the metro area back toward the Tennessee River Valley. Wednesday night lows back in the mid to upper 70s with chances of rainfall sticking around about 20% teens percentage-wise into Wednesday night. Thursday's highs again back in the lower 90s with heat index values staying on the warm side and high temperatures on Friday back in the mid to upper 80s to lower 90s with those chances of rain showers returning and sticking around for a good portion of the rest of the area. So in a nutshell, very warm, very humid, hot toward the end of the week and more chances of showers and thunderstorms just about any place out there. How does it look for the eclipse? Well, weather underground is giving the Mid-South a clear bill of health for Monday for the eclipse on the 21st. Now, the computer models I'm using don't quite have that information, so according to Weather Underground, things are looking a lot better. I'm kind of hedging my bets on this. I think we're going to be seeing partly cloudy skies and the possibility of thunderstorms out across the area. But so far, according to Weather Underground, just one source for weather is looking a lot better for the eclipse coming up next Monday. So here's hoping that it stays that way. Into the tropics, we have a new tropical storm to talk about. Gert is sitting in the just north of the Bahamas. Winds about 40 miles per hour. It's a minimal tropical storm, but enough to get a name. And this one is going to curve its way up and to around to the northeast. So it's going to be heading, curving, hugging the 
coastline of the United States and moving away back out into the northern Atlantic. So as of right now, GERT is not a threat to the continental United States. But stay tuned. Again, things could change on that very easily. Now looking back out into portions of the Atlantic, we also have a new development out just off the coast of Africa. And this one also could be a bit of a problem into the next several days. We could be looking at this one developing. Uh, the National Hurricane Center is giving this one a 10% chance of developing. Sorry about the screen there. Anyway, there's the disturbance south of the uh, out toward the Canary Islands and back into around the area just off the coast of Africa. This could be our next system and the computer models on this one are all over the place. So this one has the tendency to go just about anywhere from the southern Gulf to the Bahamas to the east coast of the United States. Way too early to tell, but again, this is something we are going to have to watch very carefully over the next several days. Once again, if you've got pictures about the meteor shower, we would love to see them. Go ahead and send them to me again, austin.onic at wrg.com. Rhonda Tennyson, thanks for joining us, and glad you're enjoying the show from Corinth, Mississippi. If you'd like to know more about becoming an amateur radio operator, the Germantown Fire Department will be teaching a new amateur radio class beginning this week. Spots are still available, last I checked. Uh, Germantown Fire Department Captain Howard Thompson will be teaching this class. I took my technician level license from, or my general level license from him. I got my uh, basic class from the Delta Club up in Bartlett. But if you'd like to sign up for this, it, the course is free. Six weeks, three hours at Germantown Fire Station number four in uh, around Forest Hill Irene Road. The course is free. The textbook is twenty-five dollars. Well worth the cost, and the testing license is ten bucks. You do not need to know uh, anything in the way of Morse code. That was dropped as a requirement a long time ago. But if you'd like to know it, again, that'd be a great skill to have out there. And again, if you'd like to know more information, all you have to do is contact Captain Thompson at jelly at Germantown-TN gov to find out more. Again, open to anyone who is wanting to become an amateur radio operator, and it starts in just a few days. It'll be starting later on this week on Thursday the 17th. So if you'd like to know more, more about that, go to staysafeshelby.us, the Shelby County Office of Preparedness, a great opportunity to learn more about what's going on there. Now, if you've been out and about and you have not had a chance to uh, catch any of the meteors from the Perseid meteor shower. I'm taking the mute off for uh, our viewers on Periscope and Twitter so they can hear this. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hear it right now because my microphone is plugged in, so you can't hear this. What you're looking at is a waterfall display, and that is, again, where you see, uh, over time, the display showing little pings of information coming on through. And this shows the burst of energy that when the meteors come streaking through the atmosphere and burn up, matter of fact, there's a good uh, burst right there. That's a pretty strong signal coming down the line right there. You can hear the radio waves from a transmitter bounce off that trail of debris and gas and reflect down to the ground. And it sounds like a ghostly whistle or a ping. If you'd like to take a look at this, very easy to do so. And you can do this on cloudy nights. You don't have to be seeing meteors out there. You can just listen in. You can go to livemeteors.com if you'd like to listen to this. Very cool website to take a look at and also to listen to. So if you have the opportunity to well, listen in on the meteors, this is a really cool opportunity to uh, do something like that, especially if you're stuck indoors and want to hear what these things sound like slamming into the atmosphere. So very cool on that. Join me on my Facebook page for tons more information about weather, science, general overall geekery, occasional commentary on this and that. And also join me on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. Join me bright and early tomorrow morning on Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m., Tons of weather information available there and great sports chat as well. You can catch them on live at talkbacklivenetwork.org, if I'm not mistaken. So join me for more information on that coming up throughout the course of the rest of the week, and we'll be glad to keep you updated on that. Questions about the forecast? Again, anything else that I've featured here, you didn't catch it, didn't have a chance to go back through the playback, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Love to have you along for the ride and glad you stopped by for tonight. We'll be on a little bit late with News Channel 3 at 
10 for this evening. Golf ran over by just a little bit, so we'll be on at about 10.18 tonight. So catch me uh, for your complete weather forecast ad on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. We'll have more information there. And, of course, Todd Demers has more coming up on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks for joining me on Periscope and Twitter and also on Facebook. Thanks for stopping on by. Uh, Kevin, dot, uh, Kevin Dunn, Meteors.com site is cool. Glad you enjoyed that. Olivia Black, thanks for joining us from Collierville. Charity Rose Ragsdale, welcome from uh, Walls, Mississippi. Thanks for stopping on by for this evening. We'll have more again tonight at about 10.18 on the late edition and more coming up throughout the rest of the week at WREG.com slash weather. Thanks for joining us from News Channel 3 in downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig. More to come with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the week.